We already had a look at Be Quiet Silent Bass 802, an enormous case, excellent airflow, great build quality and overall one of my all-time favorites. However, it's still a silent bass and just like with the coolers, this means that there is something above that, something dark. Meet the Dark Bass Pro 900 Ref 2, Be Quiet's biggest, most insane case I have ever seen. This thing is so packed full of modularity and potential stuff and it's not even funny anymore. But before this video gets like 30 minutes long, let's get immediately into this thing. Out of the very nice looking and perfectly protected box, this thing stands tall, really freaking tall. On the table, it is 585 millimeters high, 243 millimeters wide, and 577 millimeters long, which is like double of the Pure Base 500. Just so that we are on the same page here. Inside the case, we'll also find a whack ton of goodies. In the box marked with LED, we will find, yeah, who would have thought LEDs. And those two included strips can be connected to Be Quiet's LED fan controller, to which we'll get in like 15 minutes? For now, just know that we can position them wherever the heck we want, thanks to the double-sided tapes behind them. In the other box, we'll find the usual bag of mounting hardware, as well as a couple of brackets. The first one is a special water pump mounting plate, then we got an SSD bracket, a cover in case you don't want to use the two hard drive spots, and the last one would be a kinda weird looking fan bracket, which can be used to allow us to use a third fan in the front. And to round it off, we will also get three additional hard drive brackets for, you know, more space for your homework. Now before we get any deeper into the case, there is a weird thing. This case is both really advanced, really thought through and up to the newest standard, while simultaneously it's really freaking old. Originally, the Dark Base 900 came out in 2016. Then in 2018, they swapped out the fans for 1600 RPM, Silent Wing Force, which I can guarantee you was a good idea, and they replaced the USB 2 header with an USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C, and voila, revision 2. Now, being 4 years old doesn't mean that the case is bad, that's definitely not the case. However, compared to the Silent Base 802, which came out in 2020, like just 2 years after that, there is a ton of things that Be Quiet does nowadays a lot better. So, First off, good job, be quiet. It's, it's nice to see that they've learned from their mistakes. And now let's get to the steaming pile of garbage that they call user manual. This thing is literally useless. Now, compared to many other companies out there, it's still nice to see that there is a user manual at all. But uh, the only thing that you will find in here is an explanation of the front ports and, and their connectors, a explanation for the rear-mounted fan and ARGB controller, and an explosion chart with every piece of the case. Um, great. And then the whole thing is followed by exactly the same thing, just in German. And a original Dark Base 900 without tempered glass side panel image, because that, that makes any sense. And now compare that to the new style of manual that Be Quiet includes. SSD mounting options, fan mounting explanations, everything. These manuals are beautiful, and, and this will hopefully be revised as soon as possible, or at least with the next iteration. I truly hope so. So yeah, this is essentially trash, and I was forced to find out everything by myself. It was a great pleasure for the most or basically the most complicated case I have ever seen. But hey, at least I had the cinematographic trailer that caught the essence of the word dark surprisingly well. With my little Mimi me out of the way, let's change the tone, because ignoring the needlessly cut down tree, this case is freaking awesome. Of course, this case is still 4 years old, and that age can be seen. The 4mm thick tempered glass side panel, which is a bit blackened by the way, which looks kinda cool, is still mounted using the very old and now thankfully disappearing, screw the screws directly through the glass method. Now, not particularly enjoyable, but hey, the case is 4 years old, so let's give them a pass on this one. Just not on that. Other than that, this case is really up to date and packed full of features. The I.O. for example. We got two USB 3.0 Type-A, audio in and out, a massive clicky start button, a RGB color switch, and a USB 3.2 Gen 2 Type-C, followed by a USB whatever, probably two, but dedicated for quick charging and 
If you would like to know how much amps are going through that, I don't know, and this piece of trash doesn't know either. So uh, yeah, lick it and tell me how much it tickles. And now we will be getting to the first of Dark Base's exceptional features. This included QI charging station. This whole portion of the case is actually a phone charger. Yes, I remember very well how a couple of years ago everything became QI. Your desk, your car, your freaking desk lamp, even IKEA made some of those. Now I'm neither against nor for QI as a technology. I can see a lot of potential, for example a car phone holder, that makes totally sense, but a case? Really? Ignoring the fact that this USB Type-C port will definitely be faster charging my phone, or the fact that I'm losing half my energy in the process, this particular charger was designed with 2018 phones in mind. Yeah, it works, but yeah, it doesn't it doesn't really look pretty though. Plus, the top layer is just regular old plastic, so you can bet that you'll scratch that thing with the camera bump in like a couple of days. I kinda get the feeling that the tone of the review is rather negative, which it really shouldn't be, so let's change that. Inside we'll witness the full might of compatibility that the dark base is throwing at us. EATX, XLATX, ATX, MATX, Mini ATX, whatever motherboard you want to install in here, the Dark Rock Base 900 Pro can handle it, and not even tightly. There will also be a lot of space left for your cable mess, but it doesn't need to be that way. Next to the motherboard area, we got those beautiful Be Quiet themed orange rubber cable hiders, perfectly aligned with those two orange stripes that go almost all around the case on both sides. Truly beautiful. And it's kind of funny because there is absolutely zero outstandingness about rubber pieces that are protecting or hiding cables. It's like the first step into a quality case. It's just that the orange color makes it look so freaking good. On the CPU air cooler side, we got the same level of compatibility, 185mm, which basically just means yeah, good luck getting a cooler that high. For the GPU, it's just as good with 472mm. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty long. And in case that you fill out the case with hard drives, you will limit it down to 323mm, which, which is still freaking long. Now, general length and height limitations aside, let's start to get into the very complicated topics. Fans. Be quiet case are always one of two things, incredibly airflow focused or incredibly silence focused. And this one definitely falls into the silent category. Out of the box, Be Quiet includes three 140mm silent wing 3 fans spinning at up to 1600 rpm, which at the time was basically the best you could get included with the case. And to make one thing very clear, this will set you up. You don't need more fans, it will work perfectly fine just with the included ones. You can get the case, throw your system in and you are done. It's no need for more fans. From there, everything about fans inside the dark base is purely silenced to the max. The front fans are hidden inside this click-in door front panel. Yes, yes, I know, this gives me like incredibly strong year 2000 case vibes as well, but just stay with me. The air for these is coming through this mesh filter that is going all around the left and right side of the case. And then through the secondary mesh filter, which doesn't make a lot of sense, but it's okay. Now, this mesh filter is not just some ordinary piece of metal with a couple of holes. The structure of the plastic behind it is meant to be sound absorbing as well, because why the hell not? And to top it all off, Be Quiet also glued a thick layer of sound absorbing material onto the backside of that door. Because yes, the top fan spots are almost just as special. By lifting the top panel and, and please press those plastic pins in before you pull. You will thank me for that. By lifting that front panel you will find another set of fan spots. Here we can mount up to two 120s or two 140mm fans. But we are not done yet. As you might have seen in the beginning, the case does come with two DVD drive spots in, in the top of front of the panel, why? Now in case you need those, there are not a lot of powerful like current gen cases out there that still support that, but I don't need it. So what I can do is remove the QI charging station and completely unmount those two DVD drive spots. And what this allows me to do is take that weird ass looking fan bracket that comes in the accessories box, mount that thing down and voila, we just added another 120 or 140mm spot in the front and an additional 140 or two 120s in the top. 
great! In order to take a breath here, the back fence board is pretty regular, 120 or 140, nothing special about that one. And now let's get back to crazy. The PSU shroud is removable, but that's not really a can be, but a must be, cause a standard be quiet power supply from like the 90s will not fit in there unless you, you mount it from the inside, which is really not the best idea. Once you locate the four highly misplaced and hard to get through screws, you can take that whole portion out. Once you are here, we can unmount the PSU holding plate, mount that one to the PSU, then connect the cable extension and, and then put the whole thing in, which is like really the dumbest way you can mount a power supply like ever. But hey, look at that, another 120 or 140 millimeter fan spot. In case the PSU that you are using is shorter than 150 millimeters, you will be able to mount a fan directly on top of that fan bracket. But let's be honest, there is no way that the system you would be building in here can make it work with the PSU that short, so let's just get underneath it. Removing two additional screws, one on each side of the case and pretty much in the center, we can give the whole thing a nice push forward and remove the upper part of the case from the feet. Now with this unlocked, we can theoretically mount fans underneath that plate, which yeah, there is so much plastic, you need to try for yourself how your fans are like how the, the bracket around it is shaped and don't even think about 140s, maybe 120s, maybe just slims, you will need to see with the with the fan that you have. But to be honest, just mount the fan on top of that bracket and screw it down from the bottom. So you will still need to like get the top portion off to get the screw from, from the bottom in, uh, which is just necessary, but don't put a fan underneath it, it it's just not worth it. Put it on top. And while you are reassembling the whole thing, keep in mind that you can reposition the power supply a bit to the front or to the back. I would suggest going as much to the front as possible to avoid any fan obstructions, but you will need to see with all of that cable mess that is going on in the front. Okay, at this point a small little disclaimer. There is nobody forcing you to put that whole PSU shroud back on. In fact, Be Quiet themselves feature an example of that type of build in their presentational video. Might look a bit weird with that PSU just partially covered, but it's not going to get much more airflow focus in the case than this. However, if you decide to put the panel back on, there are even more fan spots on there. Once you remove the two big covers, you will find another double pack of 120mm fan spots. Of course, the performance of those will heavily depend on the PSU that you use, and in case that you got like a giant PSU, there is close to zero reasons to put a fan in like the one where the PSU is, because it will be like just on top of that and there will be like zero clearance. For the other one, you can put it on top of the shroud or below, that's really up to you, but it will get more than enough air through that giant mesh filter and then force all of that air into your GPU. And by the way, hidden inside the front panel, there is a giant filter that will take care of all of that dust for the bottom fan. So the whole fan situation with the PSU shroud and the ones below that is actually very, very thought through. However, it is bound to a ton of ifs. If your PSU is not too long, if you are willing to sacrifice a piece of your body for a huge amount of high performance fans, if you were able to find all of the screws that I mentioned before, and if you are even willing to do this to yourself in order to achieve peak cooling performance. If all of those apply to you, we can make a total count. Absolutely maxed out, we are looking at three 120s or 140s in the front, four 120s or three 140s in the top, two 120s on top of the PSU shroud, and another two underneath it and then another 140 or 120mm spot in the back. So grand total would be either 12 120mm fan spots or 9 140s with two additional 120 spots on top of the PSU shroud. And all in all, that's a lot of fans. However, it's it's not just as simple as slapping fans onto this thing. The mesh part that goes all around the case is extremely meshy and air led through Wii, however on almost every spot inside the case the fan needs to fight against one or multiple air filters, they need to be able to pull or push the air in a 90 degree bend, sometimes even multiple times, and they need to be able to push the air through whatever the noise absorbing structure inside that mesh panel is. And all of the fans at the bottom have like the hardest possible work, those ones are basically squished against the bottom panel. especially if if you put them like underneath it, then, then it's like a centimeter, if you go on top of it you have like three, but still that's not a lot. So two things about fan usage inside the Dark Base 900. Use extremely good fans, 
Silent Wing 3s or even better like Silent Wing 4s, Nokia NF, A12, X25s, Fantex T30s, just that type of caliber. Additionally, although it might be tempting to just throw four fans onto the PSU shred and below it, it, it just doesn't make a lot of sense how I explained it. The one in the back is basically useless. The one underneath it is also useless because, let's, let's be real, no PSU are allowed to use that one. Putting therefore one fan on top of it would just squish it against the PSU, which doesn't make any sense. And the one in the front, it doesn't make any sense to put it below, just put it on top. And then the one on top of the PSU shroud kind of makes sense. Uh, you either mount it inside the PSU shroud or on top, it doesn't really matter at this point. The two in, in the back are just useless, so don't even, don't even think about using them. Just the two in the front. Okay, that was one, one hell of a ride. Thankfully, the water cooling section won't be as devastating. The back spot supports up to 120s or 140 reds, but who cares about that one? The front and the top, on the other hand, are very interesting. Both of those suckers can house either a 360 or 140 red. Dual 140 red, how about that? Of course, the front one would require you to remove the hard drive bracket in the bottom, and the DVD drives in the top, but damn, this thing can do some water cooling. Another issue that often comes with cases but is rarely spoken of is radiator thickness. Sure, a standard AIO will fit wherever you want, even a Arctic liquid freezer is most of the times not a big issue. But this plate that is supposed to be used to mount down pumps and reservoirs literally yells custom water cooling. And that can become an issue if you are trying to go all in. Let's say you want to take a 420mm red, but not this one, this one. And now you want to slap on top of that a Silent Wing Pro 4 and one below it. Well, we are now looking at 119 total thickness. The front panel might be able to keep up with that, but the top will definitely not. Or your motherboard VRMs will surely not. Hell, you might even start to just cover the CPU at this point. Well, Be Quiet got a solution. Once you remove the six orange marked screws behind the motherboard plate and the other three one next to the back fan, you will be able to gradually lower the whole damn motherboard plate one PCIe slot at a time. And the new hole in the top will not stay there either. You can now take away the brackets in front of your PSU and reposition them to the top. And voila, the whole thing is now lowered by like two PCIe slots. How cool is that? Of course, this might be looking kind of weird depending on your setup and you might do the PCIe slot, but uh, A, you will not have to worry about the cable mess of your front IO because that one is now just underneath the PSU shroud and B, we now got a whack ton of space above the motherboard, which is really freaking great if you're planning to do some crazy stuff. But okay, three topics left. Hard drives, cable management and build quality. For hard drives, it's not as hard. We got a total of 7 3.5 inch or up to 14 SSD spots. Two of all of these are hidden inside the hard drive cage that we removed earlier for better airflow. Two 3.5 inch drives or two 2.5 inch drives by mounting them to the top and the bottom sides. Then we've got an additional 2.5 inch spot next to the fan controller and another one on top of the PSU shroud using this weird ass bracket. From there, out of the box, we got three of those hard drive brackets. Each of them can house either a single 3.5 or two 2.5 inch drives mounted to the top and bottom. To install these, we are required to remove one of those hiding plates next to the motherboard area. From there, slide them in from behind and screw them in behind the case. In total, we can use up to five, three of which are included already. So if you want to max out those seven hard drive spots or 14 SSD spots, you are going to need to get two ones after the fact. With useless fidget spinners covered, let's jump to cable management, which is going to be easy. A, the case is huge, and B, there is a huge amount of space behind it. Plus, there are beautiful Be Quiet theme cable rubbers, so yeah, management will definitely not be an issue in here. Like right now, I have uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 light wings in here. Yeah, that's a lot of cables, plus RGB, plus I get an additional controller in the back plus 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 cables i don't have just cables i have cable extensions in here and all of that was no issue at all and i don't know what about the case is so much forgiving but you can you can press that back panel on and then just i i, I don't even understand how that works i have so much cabling in the back and it just closed surprisingly good and just as good is the build quality everything 
on this thing is simply massive. Nothing wiggles, everything is rock solid metal or thick glass and I'm pretty sure if I try to run this thing over, it will win. A quite surprising moment came when I had the case close to completely disassembled into individual pieces during build. Although everything is built in a modularity fashion, each individual piece was surprisingly stuffed and sturdy. Usually like general case strength comes from many individual pieces that are keeping it together. But in here, even when taken apart, it is still surprisingly sturdy. So yeah, absolutely insanely made as well. Not just quality, but also the, the damn thought to make everything reversible and repositionable and detachable and oh, this case is crazy. But as we are just about to praise the case, let's also get to a bit of brutal honesty. Building inside this case was a complete shit show. Thanks to the useless piece of paper added in the box, I had to find out everything by myself. I had to find every screw, every piece of plastic that can clip, every even the possibility that I can move something in the first place. I had to find out everything by myself. Sure, there are like two mini clips which helped me quite a lot actually, even if they are definitely not explanatory videos, but they were still more useful than the manual. It, it just was a complete shit show. It took weeks to find everything so that I can even cover it in the video. And, and that was just unnecessary. Add a manual, you can also just do it on your website, you don't have to print it and, and, and change production or something. Or at the very least, Keep doing what you are doing nowadays and once you renew the case, create a proper manual. That being said, I also want to point out that this is not a beginner case. This is a hardcore enthusiast case for people who are looking to do something insane and, and really into the custom, custom building world. You know, the state just before you start to glue styrofoam to a case, that sweet spot of custom hardline water cooling paired with a horrible experience. But my bad endeavor didn't end here. In the back of the case, there is another useless piece of crap, this fan controller. Now, I'm not going to get deep into, into it other than mine does it work. And even if it would, I still wouldn't want it. They call it a dual rail powered controller. You have PVM headers on the left and on the right side. And in the center, you can switch from silence to performance mode. Switch it to performance mode. Just, just do it. And then in the front, behind the door, you will have a surprisingly low quality slider. Like everything about this case is extreme high quality, except for that slider. It <laughs> it's garbage. Anyway, you can move the slider to the left to get the RPM down or to the right to get it up with probably the worst sliding experience ever and like the, the, the tactile like it doesn't feel good. Depending on the performance or cripple selection of each side, cause yes, the left switch uh, is toggling the left PVM headers and the right one is toggling the right one. Who would have thought? Depending on that one, you will have a double limit. This basically means if you push the slider all to the right with the controller set on silence, you will still run the fans at 50% fan speed, which is so dumb. Uh, you need to put them in the performance mode to have 100% like, just put it in the performance mode. But my issue is not with the fan controller portion, but with the RGB part. In the very beginning of the video, I mentioned that there were two RGB strips included in the case. Well, the first issue is that both of those are four pin non-controllable strips, which is an issue on its own. But once you connect them to the controller and connect both Zeta power ports, nothing happens. The fans are spinning, but no RGB. Pressing the RGB button in the front is, does nothing. After hours and hours and hours of search and being annoyed, I, for some freaking reason, connected the RGB signal meant for motherboard control to the RGB header on the board meant for extra devices. And look at that, they shine. Now, I still cannot control them. The, the button doesn't do anything, and I don't know why it, it does it. It shouldn't be lighting up. This doesn't make any sense. It, why are they lighting up? To make it clear, I created a circuit between RGB out and RGB in, and now it works. Anyway, I decided if half the controller doesn't work, I won't even bother to test it more thoroughly, because because if one half is dead, the other one might do some weird stuff too. So yeah, my horrible controller experience aside, a case like this isn't really an easy thing and it wasn't particularly enjoyable either. It's completely overpowered and out of this world, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely not an easy afternoon. I think this should be 
somewhat comparable to, to building your own keyboard. You can get whatever keyboard you like, which would be a pre-built. You can get a good keyboard and switch out the keycaps and maybe even the switches, which would be like a custom PC. And you can get a backplate, housing, keycaps and so on and spend the next 48 hours soldering everything together to make a truly custom keyboard. Surely that's not very enjoyable either, but in, in the end you will get exactly what you wanted. And at the quality level that you wanted it to be and everything was made by yourself and I see this case a bit like that. So would we recommend the case? Oh god no, no don't. If you are into the design, the orange stripes or you know you want to lower the motherboard to get to the weird stuff, sure knock yourself out. But be warned that this thing is hella complicated. Additionally, although many features were very very cool, like repositioning the motherboard plate, this came at the cost of pushing back the PSU which then forced me to unscrew like 18 screws and remove like half the case just to fit in the damn PSU and that was just it's just not worth it. I understand that it's, it's really cool to have like that weird type of features, but if the most basic stuff takes an hour to do, it, 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 it's, it's not like I'm for the philosophy of like iPhones where everything needs to be one click away and it works, but this is just too much. I just don't see a reason why putting in very complicated features at the cost of making simple tasks even harder. Putting in a standard system no AIO, no custom water cooling, just everything air cooled shouldn't take more than an hour. And in here it takes way more than an hour. So although I think it's really cool, it may be a bit over engineered because requiring to move the motherboard down is like 1% of a 1% of a 1% of people who would potentially buy the case. And while we are on the subject of over engineered stuff, if you take off the back panel and clip out the central piece that says be quiet on it, we will find another two 120mm fan spots. Because why the hell not? The hard drives also need some love. Sure. So to recommend or not to recommend? Quality wise, sure. Performance wise, yes. If paired with extra extremely good fans. Don't come with Nokia NFS 12 As. This thing is silent focused and silence requires static pressure. Design wise I'm really for it. I think this looks incredibly good. However, I would still not recommend it because something like a silent base 802 exists. This thing is just like the dark base. The compatibility will be more than enough for like 99% of cases out there. The front panel can be either sound or performance optimized and the side panel is mounted in an intelligent way. And of course the manual is useful. But the most amazing part is building inside a silent base doesn't make you have suicidal thoughts and that's one hell of a buying argument. So no. Also considering the price, the Dark Base 900 is in desperate need of an upgrade. Give it proper instructions, exchange the side panel mounting method, ditch the QI charger because nobody needs that, replace the fan controller with something that actually works, exchange the slider for something that doesn't feel as cheap as this one, and rethink the way that we are able to install the PSU. Installing the most basic component shouldn't require a hunt for screws. No. Sure, that insane amount of modularity was really really cool to discover and I'm sure that there is even more that can be done inside this case. Like for example reverse builds, cause you can reverse the whole motherboard plate once you have that one out. I'm a bit sad that the case left such, such a sour taste in my mouth. That thing is actually really really amazing and over engineered to the, to the brink of sanity. Which is an awesome thing for most enthusiast people among us. It's just that damn manual. If it would have been useful, it wouldn't have taken that long to, to find everything out, like even the most mundane stuff. Plus, why does a case have a million features if there is no list of them? We, are we supposed to find them out just by ourselves? That's really not the best approach. It's, it's sad, but it's, I don't know, it's like half the issue is the manual. But okay, this should be it for Be Quiet and they're not very new and hopefully soon replace Darkbase Pro 900's Orange Ref 2. Wow, that's a heck of a long name. At this point, a huge thank you to Be Quiet for setting it over. And I was going to say puppy, but this is definitely not a puppy. On a side note, we now also have channel membership. So if you are looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but it will also serve to buy a house. Not for me, but for this thing. Th this thing is... 
big enough to have like its own freaking postal code. It, it can't stay here. It's too big. Anyway, thank you for watching and hope to see you in the next one. Bye bye.